yeah, so I'm excited to talk about like holiday preparations and ideas for actually like selling things to our followers and audience and and in person of course Darby knows all about that and getting excited about that potential because I think it's an overlooked possibility by so many content creators and artists and uh, makers all those people and uh, I want to make it easy easy for everyone to do it because that's it's something that I use as like a very significant income source for the year for me is selling during the holidays. So I want to like get everyone else in on that because it's a great, great opportunity. So Darby, I know you do your, your fairs, art and craft fairs, and you kind of load them at the end of the year for a fall and, you know, Christmas shopping season. So I, I guess that's intentional because that's when probably the most sales are made. Am I wrong? Well, typically, but I think, I think the difference is most people who hold a, a show, a craft show, an authentic craft show or a artisan festival, most, most events that are held are usually in the spring once and in the fall once. With my group, I do it differently. I hold it in, I hold it multiple times in the spring and I hold it multiple times in the fall. So yes, I'm a glutton for punishment. But I yeah. think that's smart. I think that's a smart decision because I think a lot of people, especially in person, but also just the psychology of the shopping for Christmas and stuff, it's it's all geared around that Black Friday time. I mean, it's just insane. And then the last minute people. So we, I think yours is timed like that first week in December. And actually, actually I'm doing, I do four, I do first weekend in September, October, November, and December. So it's different. I hold, I hold multiple in the beginning of the year and meaning spring. And then I hold four or five in the fall. So yeah, yeah, that's how I do it. And it's, it's a little different, but you know, we're trying to capture the ones that like to shop early, as well as the ones that are looking for gifts, the ones that like Halloween, the ones that like November, you know, and Thanksgiving, as well as the ones that like, uh, well, don't forget, you know, Rosh Hashanah, and don't forget also, you know, Yom Kippur, there's people that like to go shopping ahead of those schedules, too. So it's like, there's a lot of different holidays to attend to. Yeah, that's so true. And I think it's a, it's a good thing to pay attention to. It's not necessarily you have to make or think of gift ideas for specific holidays or anything. It's just people are kind of in that mode of looking for gifts and even buying for yourself. Like I always, when I had the money to spend, I was always like waiting for that time of year to buy maybe some of those other high ticket items that I wanted for myself because it would be a more availability and things would be at a good price. Typically, I want to kind of avoid thinking that mindset of like having to offer sales and deals. I don't think you necessarily have to do that as a independent seller or small business. It can be helpful if you like do have a full on storefront or like a website with like tons of items. But for I think what I'm talking about here for just people who are on X and maybe want to create something and sell it. I wouldn't worry about having to do a sale, you know. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I know probably in person, like that that temptation of having things, maybe some items sit on sale would be good to like kind of bring people in, but then still having all those price points. I don't really recommend discounting any goods that are handmade. And I do it deliberately because, and I, I'm, I'm very particular. I mean, I've, I've, I, I talk to people that are in my group and I talk to people that want to be in my group that, you know, maybe don't, you know, don't end up being in my group. And the reason I do it is because I'm consulting them as a business owner. And I want to know how serious they are about practicing their business. You know, if they're not going to operate from a serious level, then I really don't want them in my group. And I know that sounds really callous, but my intention is to serve the people in my group and make sure that they are surrounded by best quality people that make or best quality businesses that make their own 
specialized goods in a perfect way, you know, different designs, you know, unique patterns, unique, whatever, anything that somebody goes, Oh, I've not seen that before or whatever. Yeah. So I don't like discounting anything because it's just like what I tell them, you know, you, you're, you may be a vendor, but for you to discount your time, your services, your, you know, we've, I go over the prices before they even join my group. So I go over the prices and I tell them if they are too high or too low and, or if they're good and that way at least, and I know that sounds pretty bad of me, but I don't want my events to be unaffordable, you know, events. I want to make sure that all the goods that are being featured there are represented in a positive light. They're not, you know, they're affordable, they're worth their price and they're quality goods. I mean, that's the only reason the Smithsonian has recommended people to my events, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, we, we, I ended up asking everybody that was coming to our events and for in, in two years ago, we heard nothing but people coming in saying, Oh, the Smithsonian recommended us. And I was like, who, who, who in the Smithsonian, I need to know who, but the whole reason they're doing that is because I make sure that the, the brands are up to snuff. They're really good quality. And not only that, but when you discount, when anyone in a group or at an event discounts their goods, you're showing the customers that all the others are less than. Yeah, and- absolutely. It's a, it's a reverse psychology than we think about because when we go to stores uh, ourselves as a consumer, you know, we, we have that like, okay, we're shopping for sales. And then you think as someone who makes something that you have to do that to, to fit that, but it's a different type of psychology when you're actually making something as an artist or an artisan and even content creators making digital goods. I want to kind of lump all that in today because I think that is also a part of this. If you're discounting something yet, yeah, you're actually communicating that it's worth less than whatever you have else you have on that table or on that website so you have to be very cautious with that well yeah. even with even with you know a, a certain person that you and i both love that we follow and have a family with sorry think about that <laughs> and, and and i don't mean if i don't mean we physically is darby my children. sister wife or what? yes yeah that's exactly <laughs> right no no i'm just even with alex finn okay even with alex finn when he was looking into his pricing you know, last year and everything, I said to him, put it on a tier. I said, do it as a tiered schedule because maybe not everybody can afford the higher tier, but maybe they can afford the lesser tier. And maybe it'll be, you know, maybe they want to see how it works before they dig whole, you know, wholeheartedly into it, you know, and I think that's what he did since, you know, I think he, he's, He's just brilliant. He really is. And the thing is, it's just like what I tell all of my vendors. I'm like, you know, when when customers come here to a f- authentic craft show, they want to see things that stand out to them that are different, that they wouldn't normally be able to create themselves, and that are really just a wow factor. So anybody that comes up to you and says, can you take lower in a discounted price? I wouldn't go to their work and ask them to lower their salary for me. Why would they say that to you? Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. So true. And, but the way you offer the psychology of the discount and actually I'm going to, before we get too more, much deeper into this, I wanted to say anyone here listening, you're welcome to come up on stage and chime in, raise your hand. There, it is glitchy, so we'll test your mic and everything if you want to come up and add your thoughts to this. Because, you know, Darby and I will talk about this and we, we're going to go for a while. And I also want to hear what other people's thoughts on this or experiences with anything that we're going to talk about today. And if you're watching, I'm streaming this to Instagram and to Facebook and also streaming it to X. So there might be people watching this as a live stream. You can go to my profile, my stories, anywhere you want to find the link, and you can come in and join the conversation, add your thoughts. Also, anyone who doesn't want to speak but has something to add, please visit our purple pill, which is the comment section below the space. I've, I'm putting some of the things I've posted today that I'm going to talk about 
with links and everything that you need to kind of get. It's like a little starter pack for people who really want to maybe sell something for the holiday season. And you can sell on X, you can sell on Instagram, sell on Facebook, you can sell in person to your friends and all that. We're going to talk about it and get into it. I'm going to walk you all through that. So we're just talking about the psychology of pricing right now, which I think is something that it's great to get into right at the beginning, because the idea of offering not discounts, but offering different tiers of pricing, and Darby's so good at explaining this, having something that's maybe a higher end item that's more expensive, having something that is at the bottom of a price point, so something that's very easy to make or a smaller product that you can sell at like I would say under $20, maybe even hovering around $10 would be like a really great price point for a low end item. And then having something in that middle to give the customer a variety of options. So, you know, Darby, you talk about this so well. So I'd love for you to talk about that more. Okay. So not everybody can afford a one price item. You know, if you're making, let's just say, you know, bracelets. Okay. And that's all you're making. You know, you're not going to just say they're all $10, you know, unless you're using similar, similar, you know, beads or quality of beads. Um, and they're all the same gemstone or whatever, you know, but maybe your fasteners on that n- bracelet aren't, maybe they're an inferior quality, you know, maybe they're a superior quality. If they're sterling silver, you can price them differently, you know, but it just depends. My point is this, if that person's only selling bracelets, then They have to be concerned because not everybody wears bracelets. So what portion of the consumers that walk through that door or, you know, outside, whatever, you know, what part of those, what, what percentage of those consumers that buy bracelets are going to buy yours? So now all of a sudden you're looking at 50% of the people don't wear bracelets. Now, I don't know whether that's the case or not, but in you doing your research and your risk assessments which you should always do to check the market and see what the market, you know, what, what the market figures are so that you can better analyze your data. If you're, if, if only 50% of the people are wearing bracelets, now you have to target 50% of the consumers out there and they've got to be the right ones. Which ones are going to buy gemstone bracelets? Not everybody buys gemstone bracelets. Maybe they only buy leather bracelets. Maybe they only buy, you know, an actual metal bracelet, you know, you know, gold or silver, you know, so now all of a sudden it's dwindling down your 50% of your consumers back to maybe 30% or 25%. Now you're only targeting 25% of the consumers that walk through the door. So it's almost like you have a niche market now. So what else can you create? is going to appeal to the other 75% of that, that consumer that comes through the door. And that's how that works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how that works. And pricing wise, you've got to be able to accurately assess how long it's taken you to make those bracelets, how much it costs you to purchase the, I mean, the supplies to make those bracelets And you have to figure all that into it as well. And if you price it too high, people will not buy from you. And if you price it too low, people may not buy from you. And the reason is because they're going to think something's wrong with it. But if you price it accurately, they'll buy from you, especially if they really like it, especially if it stands out and it's not, it's not just like everybody else's that makes bracelets. So that's, that's how that works. So it's important for you always not to have one item, you know, I mean, I only make earrings, that's all I make, but yet mine are diverse enough and I have different price points that I can sell to different type of buyers. The difference is about 10 to 15%, maybe even less come up to me and say, do you make clip earrings? No, I don't. I don't make clip earrings. Why is that? Well, it's really hard to get a good clip. There's not a lot of good suppliers out there that make a quality clip to create clip earrings. Most of the clip earrings are actually like studs. 
you know, the, it's, it's against your ear. It's not dangling. So that's how that works. But yeah, I lose a little bit of it. I use a little bit of consumers because of that. Do I make necklaces? No, I could. Do I make bracelets? No, I could. I could make sets. But what are the chances that somebody's going to buy a whole set as opposed to a pair of earrings? That's where I look at it. So that's right. how and it's, and it's, then it's also you're managing your time because yeah, we're individuals here making things, creating things. So it's like, yeah, we can't make everything under the sun. Cause like, yeah, a, a set with a necklace and earrings, that would be, I think a lovely lit and you put it in a nice little gift box and present that as someone can just buy that and, and get it wrapped or whatever, or a box that they could take somewhere to get engraved or, you know, you can come up with gift set ideas isn't a bad idea. I think that's a fantastic idea, but does that mean Darby has to do that? No, because that's actually more work on her plate to do it when she knows that the earrings as they are and how she's been selling them, that works for her as well. So, you know, it's, you have to also manage the reality of like what you can pull off and not just to do things just to do them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And but also, I, plus, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. I know my market. Plus, I've got over 200 customers. I mean, you know, that come back repeatedly. I mean, how many other people do you know that have a move mobile business and get repeat the same customers that come back on a regular basis to buy from them on a regular basis? It's really hard to do. I mean, chances are it's 67% that a customer that comes back a second time will purchase as opposed to, I think it's 27% or 23% for a first time buyer. Yeah. Yeah. Super interesting. And I think I want to try and make this translate this for people here who maybe don't maybe make something, but do digital stuff and you know how you can translate that in it, what we're talking about. You can put that into a digital format. So like even in the example of, you know, making jewelry, you know, you think like, oh, well, I can't, that's not a digital product. That's a physical product. Well, we, you could take that and make jewelry making into a, maybe a guide that shows you how to make this specific thing. And that's an actual download that people buy from you. And that is also something that people might be interested in buying at the holiday season to either make their own gifts, right? They could make their own jewelry for their family or as someone that they, they know might enjoy the guide as a gift. You know, like you can really come up, be creative and come up with different ideas. And then the reverse would be someone who just does digital products. I sell courses, for example. So I'm a content creator. I sell courses. Uh, how could you package that or put a spin on it to make it something that could be giftable? You know, you can really think about this stuff a little bit deeper. And it's all about maybe marketing and also the idea of giving something physical. So you could be selling a course that might be something people enjoy, but you package it in a way that they get a maybe a gift card in the mail that you send that has their special code to redeem on your website to get the course. And now it's something physical that just has like a different kind of presentation or perceived value to that. And I don't know, that's like a neat idea I just had that I've never seen before, but would be a kind of a creative way to entice people to buy from you for gift for holiday gifts. These pe people are already shopping. Our followers are already shopping. Maybe not today, but I mean, they're it, it, a month, two months in the future. They are already going to be shopping for stuff. And if they like you and they follow you, they want to spend their money with you. <laughs> so it's not about selling to them. I want to word it differently. You're giving them, you're giving your audience and followers the opportunity to spend money or buy from you. You're just giving them that opportunity. And if you kind of think about it that way, it, it becomes less like, oh, I'm salesy. This is icky. This is something that my followers are going to be spending money on anyway. Why don't they spend it with an independent creator, small business? You know, so think about it that way. And hopefully it can maybe think about something that you can offer 
to your audience. So I've pinned at the top my, I came up with this this morning, my three favorite giftable product ideas. And this is for selling online. <clears throat> you can also purchase these in bulk and sell in person, you know, if you were going to do an art fair like like Darby talks about, but it, but those, it would be more, you would have to, of course, get them approved because you're not actually physically making the product. But the idea for these, and I have it pinned at the top, and then also you'll find it in the purple pill if you're listening to the replay. These items are different price points, and they're also very highly giftable. And that means that when people see them, they're like, oh, I can see this as a gift for someone. It's just already pre-programmed in their brain that this could be a good gift for pretty much anyone. You know, that's that's the idea, idea of, the, of these. And they're very easy to work with. These specific ones are through a company called Printed Mint, which I will disclose I am affiliated with, but only because I've worked with them for years. And they had an opportunity to say, hey, do you want to be affiliated with us? And I'm like, yeah, I already talk about what you do anyway. And I already use your product anyway. So why not? I don't have a problem doing that. <laughs> but there's many others out there. So you can shop around. But why I like them in particular is because with their products, you can customize them with your own designs. You can put your own artwork. You can put your logo. You, you, you don't have to be an artist. You could just be a content creator with a symbol or a saying or whatever and that people might want to buy that i don't know so you have to kind of think outside of the box a little bit but that what print and mint does is they you personalize the design and they will drop ship it directly to your customer and they actually do a little bit of a packaging that's actually nicer than most of these companies so that i've worked with a lot of companies that do this including companies that you've probably heard of like Printful and Printify is another one. These are all great companies, but the packages arrive kind of bland. So Print and Mint just goes above and beyond another layer and adds just nicer packaging, which I find good, especially if you're trying to really give that artisan, you know, artist something that you want to really give that special touch versus just something just showing up in a in a plain old mailer <laughs> it comes in a little bit nicer packaging so if you're interested in looking into that i've chosen three that i think are very effective you could pick one of them you could try all three one is an ornament ornaments always do well it's amazing they always do well i would say if you're going to pick one to do for the holidays an ornament and it doesn't have to be christmas People put ornaments, Halloween, they put ornaments <laughs> on all the other holidays. And so that's always a winner, always a winner. And they sell these for, I think, $10 or around that price point. You have to purchase them. And when an order comes in, you purchase it and pay for the shipping. And so you just charge your customer enough to cover that plus profit. So I sell these for $26, an ornament a ceramic ornament. That's what I sell them for. So, you know, you can do this and it makes a great item that people, people love. Darby, talk about ornaments that you see what people buy in person. Is that a thing during the holidays? Do you notice anyone of your vendors selling ornaments? Oh, sure. Sure. There's all different types of ornaments. There's glass balls that are painted. There's, there's other, you know, people recycle things that they find and make them out of or ornaments or make them into ornaments, you know, by using a clasp or something of that sort to hang it from some people make earrings out of things like that too. Broken glass ornaments, you know, I mean, I know when I was younger, one of the things was taking clamshells and putting a picture in it and then shellacking it, you know, I mean, that was something we did in elementary school, you know, which was kind of cool. It was like, you know, an oyster shell, which is so pretty on the inside you know, and then taking a picture and putting it in there, just kind of like that was an ornament, you know, and then we did that each year. So our grandparents or our parents would have that. I think we did it for grandparents day. And then let's see. Yes, there are fabric ornaments and different textile ornaments. You know, some people do macrame snowflakes and things like that. There's all types of different things 
you know, there's just a lot of you. I mean, you get creative, you get creative, all of a sudden, you start coming up with some, some different thoughts, and you run with it, you know, you know, whether it's painted, whether it's wooden, whether it's, you know, some people create a wooden ornament, and then they paint that. Let's see what else I'm trying to think of all the different. Yeah. Ways. Yeah. So the, the point yeah. is here, this is such a pop, obviously, this is a popular item. People will, if they're going to one of these fairs, they're looking for something to buy. And that is such an easy purchase because it's either for themselves their family or something that is giftable. And it just is always a winner. And that's like kind of the point I'm trying to just drive home. And these ones that I picked out, you can, you don't have to do the work. It, the company does the work for you. All you have to do is come up with the artwork and you can put it on the ornament. So it's a little shortcut version. And then what Darby's talking about is actually making your own ornaments and selling them, which is a great idea too. So if you have that opportunity locally to be able to do that or to put together, if you have a website that has your products on it already, making something specifically that's an ornament that can be purchased that way, I think is a fantastic idea in whatever art style you're doing. So there's a few, this is, you have no excuses here. There's every kind of option to fit whatever fits you. And we kind of do very broad topics here as far as selling and everything, because it can apply to so many different things. We try to give specific examples. So if anyone in here is like kind of stuck with whatever they're working on, whatever they're doing specifically, and just like trying, having a struggle, trying to make that connection. It's like, how would this work for me? Um, come on up and ask us or drop your question in the purple pill and we'll get into it. Cause I'm sure our brains together and everyone else here we can come up with something. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to also um, let you know too. Another thing I've seen too, which was really cool. People will take, well, you know, because rather than they go into the landfills, they'll take bleach bottles, cut them in half, long ways, long ways, and they'll create door door decor, like a Santa oh, that's Claus. That's right, door decor. Yeah, like yes. Santa Claus. Talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And what they do is they make a Santa Claus. They'll take yarn and put yarn all in it and but it's you have a you have a bleach bottle that's cut long ways so you have two sides now and it's cut in half so you can make two out of one bleach bottle and what they do is they sew in they sew in all this white yarn or whatever you know for the beard and the mustache of Santa Claus and then they'll do like a Santa Claus hat on top and from the bottleneck of the of the bleach bottle they'll make that the hanging part and then they'll do googly eyes type thing. And, you know, it's just kind of cool. So they make little bleach bottles, but they're repurposing something that would have normally gone into a landfill or trash and they're making it their own. And it's really kind of quite cute. Yeah. That's so cool. And that the decor end of this too, I think that's where maybe, you know, the ornament is like the very most affordable mini version of a, a holiday decor. So it's a fantastic price point for starting out, but that, yeah, it can expand to things, something, the signs or the, not just signs, but the, the flags or whatever it, that people. Textile. Like yeah. 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 And wreaths and fabric you know. material. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, some people even make leather material goods, you know, they make different, you know, like I have one, one vendor, she's amazing. I mean, she makes leather goods, you know, and, and any scrap, any leftover leather that she might have, she tries to repurpose that somehow into something else. And that's what you do. Once you're utilizing all of your, all of your supplies to the fullest point, you're not, you're not losing out. You're not wasting anything, which is good. So, I mean, granted, if you screw up, you can always write that off at the end of the year for part, part of your supplies, but you don't want to, you don't want to get into a habit of having a lot of that because they will come after you and it's wrong. You know, it's, you know, it's not going to be the whole supplies that you're writing off. It would be a portion of that, you know, maybe a 10th of that or a hundredth of that or something of that sort, you know, but, um, but it's better to just always be accurate and you have to keep good notes. You have to keep good details because they do want to know what's going on and they will ask you questions. And if you don't have those things all wrapped up in a nice little bow, it's going to look bad on you and your business too. Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And so the to say you have an X account and you're making something that you want to put out for sale to your followers for the holidays and specifically. And I think it's a fantastic time to, to experiment with this because you will probably get a couple sales and that's always fantastic motivation. Starting to do this um, other times of the year. Yes. Always start like don't let something stop you. But I think if you're like on the edge or verge of trying to wanting to do something like this, I think this time of year is the perfect time to start and you can sell right on X. And there's a few ideas I had. So if you're making a physical product, like Darby's talking about, it, you know, if you come up with a holiday theme product, if it's an ornament or something else, decor or whatever it is, creating a, um, using Venmo or PayPal to create a link that people can click on to purchase that is probably the most low barrier to entry to actually start selling things. You need to understand, of course, like the, your pricing and then of course the shipping. You always want to think about that when you're selling physical goods because that is where you can end up losing money. So you really want to think hard about your pricing. And that's why we're talking about this now. It's August. People might think we're crazy. This is when you need to start thinking about this because you want to get a couple product ideas. I would say three max, especially if you're starting out and you don't have anything really, and you're just trying to try this, I would start with one personally. But if you're really gung-ho, I would say three would be your maximum. And start thinking about it now. Get those ideas mapped out. And then also get that pricing. Figure out that pricing nailed down so you know 100% you're making money on every purchase. So if someone from Alaska buys your item, you're not losing money from that shipping costs, or you set it up so that they are paying in addition to the cost of the item or whatever the price of the item is. They're also paying shipping on top of that. You have to figure that all out. This, this takes a while. So that's why we're talking about this stuff now. And one of the shortcuts that I was talking about with Printed Mint, the, the ornaments, that you can tie into if you have a Shopify store or if you have an Etsy store, you can connect those and sell through there. But another thing, and I pinned it to the top and it's also down in the purple pill, is I talk about a Printify pop-up shop. So Printify is another one of these fulfillment companies and they don't have the nicest packaging, but if you are don't have a website, don't have PayPal set up, you know, these things to sell yourself and you want to just have it kind of an automated people buy things, it gets, you pay for it and then it ships to the customer. Like the most low barrier to entry is these Printify pop-up shops. And it is so cool. You can go in there, pick your products. Again, I recommend picking like maybe one, two or three products and just focusing on those, add your designs, set up, put them in the Printify pop-up shop. You can customize it a little bit with your logo. And now you have an e-commerce shop that you can send people. You have a link that you can pin to your profile. You can put it in your Instagram stories. You can put it in your posts and your replies. You can DM people who ask about what your work. You know, you have a link to send them and then they can buy things. And it you can set it up in a couple, like, probably not even an hour. It's so easy. If you have the artwork ready, it's very cool. So the, that's another little shortcut. And I can get into that more if people have questions about it. It's fairly straightforward. And I recommend just like checking it out if you're curious about it. All right. So I kind of <laughs> went off on that tangent, but I really wanted to get into it because I think it's a, such a fantastic way to really just shortcut all that all that confusion of being like, oh, I don't have a website. Oh, I only have my social media where I have followers and they always ask me about this stuff. And this is a way to just like, in a very short amount of time, have something up where people, giving people the opportunity to buy something. I think that's how we need to think about it. We're not selling to them, just giving them the opportunity to buy something. And I think that's a great way to, to, twist the psychology of it because as artists and content creators and stuff, we don't want to be like the sales 
salesy person or sound sleazy or the grifter or whatever you want to call it. I think that psychology blocks a lot of people. All right. We've got Rich is up on stage. Welcome, Rich. Always good to see you. Did you have something you wanted to ask or add or thoughts on what we're talking about while I regroup here? Or (laughs) were you just coming up to say hi? Oh, I was just coming up to say hi. But, you know, I do love the Christmas ornament talk because I am a, a nut for Christmas. Like I start decorating the day after Thanksgiving. And yeah, every year I go out and I try to find a new Christmas ornament. And I love handcrafted ornaments, blown glass. That always gets me. But yeah, I, I'm always on the hunt for like one. And like I'll go to like craft fairs and art fairs and stuff like that and see what I can find. And yeah, it's kind of like a little bit of a tradition for me. And also I love the idea of like, putting artwork onto the ornaments and selling that because I hadn't even thought about that before. And that helps you add a a lot of items to your website or whatever platform you're selling on that's at a much lower price point and very niche or niche specific. So yeah, I I love that. And like, you know, as much as I love Christmas, I should be able to come up with some Christmas designs, hopefully. Yeah. And sometimes (laughs) it doesn't even have to be a Christmas design. It just has to be like whatever your most popular design is just available as something someone can hang on their tree. (laughs) Well, some of our best memories, I'm sure you guys remember, you know, some of our best memories are, you know, opening that box of Christmas ornaments and finding things that don't even pertain to Christmas that, you know, maybe you made, you know, whether it was like Snoopy on skis or something like that, or, or you found, or you gave it as a gift to somebody. I mean, like I said, with the, with the, oyster shells, you know, I mean, putting your picture as a child in an oyster shell and then shellacking that, you know, and, and then hanging that as an oyster, I mean, as a ornament from the tree. I mean, there's a lot of little things you can do each year as someone's growing up or, or to memorialize each year for yourself. I mean, whether it's, you know, painting on, on something, I mean, even, you know, painting the year on something, you know, or, or, I mean, there's just so many different ways to do so many different things and they don't have to be Christmas related. It's the same thing that I tell my customers about my earrings. Just because you're wearing blue doesn't mean you have to wear blue earrings. You can wear, you know, you can wear a a turquoise based earring. You can wear anything. I mean, any different styles or shapes or sizes, because a lot of times that offsets that blue or that offsets the outfit, or it draws attention to your outfit, or maybe even drawing attention to your eyes. So it all depends on how you perceive Christmas and what you what your design taste is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, giftable things, you're not getting think about the gifts you get at Christmas. It's not Christmas stuff. (laughs) Sometimes it is. Maybe it's like, you know, fuzzy slippers, reindeer slippers or whatever. But most of the time it's like, oh, this is something I actually wanted or could use. So, you, you know, it doesn't have to be that theme. But, you know, having something that, like Rich is saying, he likes to get special ornaments every year. So what if his favorite content creator on X was like, hey, I have this special ornament. I think he might be the customer for that. Right. Or yeah, favorite definitely. Ornament. Or favorite football team or favorite soccer team or favorite volleyball team, you know, all different things, you know, golf club, you know, I mean, you could do different things. There's so many different things that you can do, you know, just to, just to add a little, a lot of, a little bit of flair, you know, type of thing. You know, another thing that I thought about doing that I haven't done yet is I saw that, you know, I do the print on demand website to also get things at a different price point is they have puzzles like little miniature puzzles. So I was like, that'd be a good little like stocking stuffer gift that I could come up with. And I could advertise it as a a stocking stuffer gift. So yeah, I'm so glad I joined the space because honestly, I've been feeling really demotivated and I just haven't done anything with my art website because I just, I don't know, I built it and then I just kind of like, I don't know, something just hit me where I was like, what am I doing? Uh, Nobody's going to buy framed prints, you know, but so yeah, I'm so glad I came into the space because it's it's definitely helping me brainstorm other product ideas that I just hadn't even thought about really. And when you do that stocking stuffer with the puzzle, don't forget to add the puzzle glue because some people might even consider gluing that whole picture and using it as a portrait over a stairwell or something. So don't forget about that because people do do that. I mean, not everybody you know wants to put it back in the box. 
Right. Yeah. And yeah, any of those little add ons that make that just an opportunity for someone to buy. And with the print on demand, it's harder to, you know, make bundles, you know, with that stuff. Cause like if you come up, you're selling the puzzle through the print on demand provider, you know, you'd have to ship it separately yourself or something. So it can be a little bit complicated, but, you know, it's things to think about if you were going to do that in person, having that available. Or if there's a way, you know, if you purchase a bunch ahead of time and you put together a little gift set, I will say that <clears throat> some of these items are tried and true and are guaranteed to sell. Um, and then some of them are a little bit tougher. So like the, that's why I like the ornament, like suggesting the ornament. Cause I'm like, okay, this, this will work for people. You will sell a few of them at the very least. And then the other ones I talked about in the post. So if you go back one on the Jumbotron, the mug is another good one. Now, normally I don't suggest items that are expensive to ship and mugs are very expensive to ship right now. They're almost more to ship than the cost of the actual mug. So you just have to be aware of that. So when you do sell mugs, you want to have it in your mind that it's a premium item that you're selling, not just a regular old coffee mug. And because the price of the mug, I don't know, we'll just say it's $5, right? And then the shipping's going to be nine bucks. So you've got to price this if you're doing print on demand, I'm talking about. If you're buying in bulk and decorating the mugs and selling them, and it's a little bit different. But that's the reality of these things. So my price point for mugs, if you want to, <laughs> if you can believe it, is $28 for a 12 hour month. Whoa, Christopher's with us. I thought he fell asleep. I've but... been listening the whole time. Okay. <laughs> I'm always here. Yeah. This is the, okay, good, good. Glad it's always here. here. So this is why I want to have this space because I want to talk about the reality of this. Now, you, that mug better be special if you're selling it for that price. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. What, what do yeah. I get for a 20, 20, yeah, okay. like $22 mug? So how I do this is, you know, I have it as a personalized item. So that person purchasing it is getting something that's unique to them and how you could do that is with like artwork or whatever design for the mug you just have a spot on there that personalizes it for them if it's you know the family name or the year or a special message to the person that is being gifted the mug so you could actually very easily you know we all can use canva and or come up with a text design you know these days that's a very low barrier entry for people to design something like this so you get a custom message from the person that they can have put on the mug and now it's personalized and now this is like a one-of-a-kind piece unique item featuring you know your own artwork so they that ties into that you know it, you can get creative with this stuff to make those mugs seem more valuable and then also through the post with the link I shared, it's it's to a page of the all the assortments of mugs available. So there's not just your regular diner coffee mug. You can get them with colors so it can tie in to your artwork. You can get them on glass, which I think just because it's a glass mug now, it seems like it's a little bit fancier, even though the price point's the same. You can do, there's the, the camp mugs, you know, the enamel camp mugs. So those are kind of a different style. So you can try different things, um, but people will like mugs for gifts. They're very simple gifts, coworker gifts, you know, family members, acquaintances that maybe aren't good friends. They just want something that they can give that maybe is just unique and the, these are very, they print very well. So the colors will be vibrant. You can make a very beautiful design and, and entice people that way. So yeah, I want to talk about mugs because it's a great gift. It's a great item, but you have to be very, look into that pricing for the shipping costs alone. It's going to scare you <laughs> for print on demand. Anyway, if you're making them, like if you're buying mugs in bulk and then shipping them out from your home, then, you know, you obviously want to look into the actual cost of shipping for that with packaging and everything. Yeah. So I will that, and then I put the, in there as well, the t-shirt, which is the classic. I don't necessarily recommend t-shirts in general, 
but I think it's a great idea for content creators to have a t-shirt available. It's just with the print on demand specifically, it's so easy to just do that. And I wouldn't have like 20 different t-shirts, but you know, one or two t-shirts available for people to purchase. It's just an easy one for a lot of people. And if it's unique and specific to you, your brand, your design, people will be more in, in interested. If you're thinking of opening a t-shirt shop, like I don't recommend that. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> That's been done to death. But if you have a following and you have a special thing that you want to put on a t-shirt that you think they'll, they'll like, you know, go for it. I think that's a great product idea for selling online. We're talking about selling online. When we talk to Darby about selling in person, you got, it's got to be something a little bit more special, especially if you're doing a craft fair or an art fair. You can't just show up with these bulk produced items and expect to do well. <clears throat> right, Darby? You, that, they want more unique, special items. Well, at least in my shows, yeah. In my shows, they're looking for something specialty, you know, that they're not going to find anywhere else. You know, it's like a gift store. You know, you go to the gift store and you might see the same thing from another jewelry store or something of that sort, but not necessarily is, is are you going to go back? You know, you want to see things that you wouldn't normally find. You want to have that go-to gift store that you would find things that you wouldn't get anywhere else you know, or a secondhand store, same thing. You know, you only go to the secondhand store when you know these clothes are really worth it. And, you know, the prices are really reasonable and yet they're almost impeccable and you can't believe you're buying in a secondhand store, you know, type of thing. Same thing with craft shows. Craft shows, you know, you have, you have various types of craft shows. Let's, let's break that down for a sec. You have craft shows, you have artist shows, you have flea markets, and you have also flea markets and, you know, festivals. Festivals are more, you know, you've got games, you've got possibly farm animals, you know, you, you have different things, you know, it, it's a festival. It's, it's, you know, they're, they're looking to broaden the scope of what you're doing there. It's kind of like a town fair, same thing. Okay. A flea market show is reduced rates on everything. Do you want to be there as a craft person, as somebody that creates your brands, as somebody that makes an, a unique item? No. Why? Because they're going to want to chisel your prices down. They want everything for a quarter. They want everything for a dollar. And it's going to insult the hell out of you. So I wouldn't recommend participating as a vendor when you are a unique brand and you're selling a good that nobody else probably makes. You know, you want to stand out. You want to be represented in a list of all really good brands. So I recommend then you go to a business festival or something, you know, I mean, people even do, uh, what are they called? Farmer's markets. Farmer's markets can be on the same grounds as a, as a flea market sometimes. Just depends on where that farmer's market is. So you got to be really skeptical. I'm very critical about where I go to set up my earrings. I just am. And you have to be, you know, is it at a museum? Is it at a, you know, is it, is it someplace that's dedicated strictly to art? Are there commercial vendors there? Commercial vendors, meaning people that are selling, you know, floor coverings, or are they selling, you know, are they, you know, selling bathroom renovations, you know, those are commercial businesses. Do I want commercial businesses in my events now? I mean, I could, I could take their money and say, please go ahead, you know, and be there. But at the same time, I don't want an event that's going to be strictly about commercial businesses. I want it to be about unique and homemade goods. I, you know, yes, when you provide a service to renovate a bathroom, yes, that's your own business. But it may not be your own business. You might be contracting that out to people. Well, that kind of just defeats everything that I'm talking about. You know, if you're using independent contractors and they're not 100% with the business, then are they really representing the business? No, not necessarily. The other thing is, too, do I want election, election people to rent spaces at my events? You know, that's a huge one right now. Are there... You know, are there, you know, candidates 
that are running for office that want to be in my events? Yes. But do I tell them? Yes. No, I do not. I mean, again, I could take their money and I could say, sure, but why do I want that to be sabotaged by a bunch of people with campaigns? You know, Can I ask I you a question, Darby, real quick? <laughs> yeah, go I ahead. Think this, I, I think this is valuable because, you know, not everyone's in your area. Mar Darby's in Maryland area, you know, so if you're looking to sell in person, hit her up. But what can like someone who makes something look for in their like what should they be looking for in their area if they want to potentially do like a holiday market this year try that out well talk Over to other vendors talk to the other vendors and find out you know if you have friends that make their own brand you know ask them say hey where do you usually you know or or where are your events let me come see you i want to check out your events you know and ask them ask them just say i want to check out your events now some people in that line of work don't want to tell you if you're another vendor because they might feel you're going to steal their place at that event if it's a good event you know then there are holiday events that people really like and are they only craft show only or do they include multi-level marketing companies like tupperware like you know tupperware like what is it what's the other ones yeah like the pampered chef and all pampered chef and all that stuff do yeah. I allow them in my events? No, I don't. Even though they bring a good following, they still are not owning their business. I mean, they own their business in selling it, but they're a multi-level marketing company. They represent somebody else's brand. And I personally want to make sure that the people that are at my event are the owners and the brand creators. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Darby, for that. So yeah, if you're look into this, like maybe you're not ready this year, right? But you can start thinking about this stuff and get ready for next year and visit the local markets in your area. Go to them and see wh which ones you're like, oh, there's a lot of people here. I could do pretty well here. Let's see what other people are selling. What's What are people looking at? What are other people, what are the shoppers looking at? And I see Jeff joined us up on stage Thank you so much for coming up. Always good to see you. What would you like to add to this conversation? I'd, I'd love to know. Actually, I had more of a question. I was wondering if uh, anybody that has this type of storefront where you can do smaller creative things, have you anybody thought of working with creators on X for anything that they might have that they don't want to produce their, themselves. To give you a more concrete example, I, I thought about doing engagement farmers implement trading hats, but I don't have the time to, to do that. Not, not that that would be a, a great one, but has anybody even thought about like almost offering that as a service if you already are set up? with a sales platform that could handle that kind of thing? Yeah, no, that's a great question because this is what the print on demand companies, this is the gap they fill. Now it's something that they, you work with them individually yourself and create the design and create the storefront. So you're thinking about like, okay, what's the shortcut to that? Like someone else does that for me. <laughs> right. So I wouldn't recommend that because now, the, that's when these price points, like the more people you add into the chain of command here, the more the more expensive these products get. So in pinned up at top, Jeff, is the Printify pop-up shop, which is the fastest way to, you could get a design on a hat, put, put it in that pop-up shop, and you could send people there like later today. It's so fast and easy for you to set up. And all it does is when someone buys something that you've created and put in there, then you pay for that item. So like the hat's $10 plus $5 to ship it to the person. You pay that money to Printify. They make the item and ship it to the customer. So you just want to make sure you're pricing that item at enough so that you're profitable and you're not losing money on that. So that's the only actual like work that you want to make sure you do. And, but that's definitely the fastest way to do it. You don't even need a website or anything. If you do have a website, depending who you're with, like if you're using Shopify or I use Squarespace, for example, these, these websites will integrate directly with a lot of these platforms. So you, or Etsy, you can integrate with Etsy, be an Etsy shop. And 
send these orders directly to these fulfillment partners and they'll ship it directly to the customer. So they're kind of the middleman. If you, if there was someone who is doing another step in between and then taking more money off of the top, I mean, you'd be have to sell your hats for $50. I mean, it just, it gets a little bit out of control with all these middle middle people <laughs> already with the print on demand it's overpriced for what what the items are so you have to be very selective of what items you choose to sell and then also making sure that the design and the value that you're giving them is you know equivalent an equal value so i don't know does that answer your question jeff yeah that that mostly answers i I didn't know if I think like in my case, and I think I might not be the only one, I don't have time to do the website or, or any of that. And I was just wondering if there were enough creators in that situation that there might not be an opportunity for somebody to go, Oh, well, we, we do stuff for all kinds of creators on X. And I, I, get the part where you're diluting the profit, but at the same time, I might not get it done otherwise. So some profit for me is better than like no profit. Yeah, sure. And I do this. This is what I do for people is like, okay, you want to set this up. I will set it up for you and then hand it over to you and you're now in charge of it. So that's like kind of what I do for people like building websites and then also this e-commerce stuff. So I'm actually like the person that does this for people. If you're looking to like just get someone to set it up for you and get it rolling. And so you can always just talk to me if you want to. But the, it it's not as daunting as it sounds. Like the, the Printify pop-up shop that I have up there, you like literally an hour <laughs> if you have a design you can have it going like, and then have a link to share with your followers. It's, it's so, so simple. So if you have that time to try it, try it. If not, you can reach out to me and I can, we can work it out. Or there's other people that do that kind of thing that work in e-commerce. So don't be, <laughs> don't hesitate. Rich, you have your hand up. Yes. I just wanted to talk to what Jeff was talking about. You know, I've had that idea because as part of the silver community, I follow a lot of independent silver artisans, and a lot of them don't have websites, or if they do, their websites just aren't put together very well. And there's so many of them out there who have really cool, unique designs. And I've thought about, like, I don't know, offering to sell some of their pieces on my website, but I guess that would be kind of like sourcing from, a, I don't even know what the term for that would be, but yeah, I guess I would have to physically either buy it and hold on to it and then ship it myself. Or I don't know if I would then push the orders to them and have them fulfill it and then give me a cut. That's the problem is I, I don't know how any of that would work. And then on the, the flip side for artwork, I've also thought about reaching out to some of these amazing AI artists and physical artists here on X and you know asking them if they would like me to sell any of their artwork. But again, I don't know if I would just pay them right out for the digital you know, images from the beginning and then all the profits from the sales would be mine. And then they would just get, you know, the, the, the clout of knowing that their artwork is selling or if I would give them a cut of each purchase. Yeah. I, that's the part is I, I haven't worked out those dynamics yet. Yeah. And this is why I would be wary of anyone who offers that kind of thing, because wh exactly what we're just talking about here, there's a lot of like opportunity to be scammed by somebody or even unintentionally like I generally want to help artists and I want to put their work out there and I want to sell their work and get people to buy it like you could be genuinely doing that and then you have all these other layers of chances of you know what if something doesn't sell or what if someone's not happy with the pricing arrangement or the there wasn't clear communication you know there's lots of opportunities for it to go sour and the thing is, what I'm talking about here, it's just so, it's so easy to do, guys. It really is. <laughs> and I, I try to make it that barrier to entry as simple as possible. And then for those who just don't have the time, which I totally understand, there's people like me that do this for a living and can do it for you and set it up for you. So find those people who will set it up for you so that you can run it and have it going kind of on autopilot 
Um, and then if something, there's a snag or anything, then, you know, you can reach out to the person who helps you set that up and get it going. But if you, if you want to hand that off, I mean, you're talking about almost like license, licensing your artwork to someone else. I mean, this is where the paperwork and the lawyers get involved and no one wants that. <laughs> no one wants that. No one wants that. Especially if we're talking about like, okay, maybe I'm making, you know, $50 off a month off of the, the sales, you know, <laughs> really when you're starting out. Yeah, I agree. And you know, that's, that was my issue is like, how would that all be handled? And I feel like if I did invite another artist to come to my platform and sell their work, I would almost need to like make them a partner and just cut all the sales and profits down the middle with them, you know? Um, but again, I, I have no idea. Right. It's just, it's just so complicated and confusing, but the, to set it up yourself, the, these companies like Printify, uh, for example, they want you, they want creators to use their platform. You know, they want you on there. So you can even just ask them how, what to do, and they will tell you what to do because they want you on there. They want you selling things and they, they want to help you for sure. So definitely, yeah, reach out to me. Anyone who has questions about this, anyone listening, wherever you're listening, if you have questions about this, reach out to me and I will point you in the right direction you know, you don't have to hire me. I'm not, that's not why I had the space today. I'm not like trying to get clients. I'm actually too busy right now. But you can, <laughs> you can be hired is you yeah. know, don't, don't, don't decline it because I mean, if, if somebody likes what they're hearing and they trust you well enough that, and they want to become a customer of yours, then don't, don't deny it. No, it's yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> I would not hesitate to have Kate work on that stuff for me. She is so intelligent, and like you can tell, like you're a good person, Kate. So yeah, if I ever needed any of that work done, like I would come to you first and foremost. And I've already recommended to you to multiple people, and I will continue doing that. Yeah. Well, plus, I I totally agree with you, Rich. I mean, the thing is, I work with her on a regular basis, and you know, if I didn't feel she wasn't skilled you know, in her, in her, you know, line of work, I wouldn't be working with her. You know, I mean, I can't work with someone I don't trust. And I just want to shout out Rich dropping in the comments here, a, an ornament. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got, you got me inspired. <laughs> this is how easy it is. Like, so Rich does have a, a website and a store set up, you know, so that's a little bit of work. Yeah. But he, he decided, okay, I want to put an ornament up because that's a great idea. And he just did it while we were on the space today. Like, this is what I'm talking about. It is once you kind of get through that hump of setting things up, which, you know, you can take the time to do yourself, take a few hours, get, get it done. Or you can have someone like me help you or point you in the right direction or send you YouTube videos, or you can hire me to do it. Then once it's done, you, you see an item. Oh, they have Christmas ornaments in this company I work with that's cool. And then you have a design ready to roll and boom, it's up on his website. The, this really cool, like very festive. Design. All right. So Rich, <laughs> let's talk how much you would sell that for though. And, and, you know, I mean, if it was a tangible good, how much would you, you know, first of all, I, cause you, I mean, obviously that's an electronic version. No, you it. can go look at, he put it. Oh. It's an ornament for sale on his website. Yeah. It's in the purple pill, right? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it, but is that, that's an electronic image of it, right? That's not a physical, oh. tangible good. No, but it, it's a print on demand. So when they buy it, they'll get shipped the, the ornament. Gotcha. Oh, good. Okay. So do you, did you price it out already and everything? I did, but I think I got my pricing messed up. I did nineteen ninety nine for one piece, but then for some reason you can order three, five and 10 pieces and it's given out a discount that I don't know if I want to give. So yeah, I need to look at that pricing a little closer. I was trying to rush it, you know, cause I wanted to share it with everybody. <laughs> how large is yeah. that? How large is that? Is that about the size of a palm? Like your, your palm or is it bigger or how big is it? You know, that's, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question, Darby. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to look. I just picked the ornament that I, I don't know, the first one I saw. I really just like it. it. I like the colors. I like everything about it. And I think there's definitely a market for this. So I think, and, and it's unique, which is really brilliant. So if I were you, I'd get onto this before somebody steals that item. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, you guys have depth. I'm going to be doing more of this later on today. So thank, thank you both. And the other thing is, is it visible from the other side too? Or is it just one-sided? Because I would hope uh, it's it visible is. from other sides. Okay, good. Yeah, the print is on both sides. 
Good. Fantastic. Good job, Rich. Yeah, this is Thank so you. cool. And and this Darby's asking some really great questions because we want to make sure when you have an item for sale online, we have the answers to all those questions either right there in the product description or if someone asks us, we know right away. And you have to kind of so so like Darby was perfect because he's like, Oh, what size is this? Because it's hard to see from the image, the actual scale of this. So you want to make sure you add that and put that down there in the description so we know the size. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and also things. too, the string that's attached to it, is it just a, is it an elastic, like a stretchy one or is it a really, you know, is it like some type of rope? What, you know, cause that makes all the difference in the world. If you get a crappy little thing hanging from it, it's going to look like it's going to put that on the same lines of it being a cheaper product. So you want to make sure that the thing hanging from it is, is a solid, like a nice, feature to it as well. And the other only other thing I would say is for this price, I would probably make this three for $19.99 if I were you. But that's it depends on what that is being featured on. That's just how I would do it. And I wouldn't do any other discounts if you were going to do it that way. If you're going to do one piece, I'd probably say maybe $13, but it all depends on, like I said, what that material yeah, is. Yeah, that wouldn't be one. profitable. See, that's the problem, yeah. Darby, with, I already know, the print, these print-on-demand things. So he's not doing any of the handling of this product. So it's oh. the, the, the the company's printing, taking picking the product, making it, and shipping it to the customer. So that costs a premium price. So he's probably you know, paying like eight bucks plus shipping or something like that for the item. So you yeah. have to look into it. Yeah. yeah, it says for the the single one, the production cost is five forty one. Then the buyer shipping cost is five eighty nine. That's estimated. So there, you know, that's like eleven dollars and some change. Um, right. So even if you sold one for fifteen, you'd still be making back some money. Do you see what I'm saying? So you would still be yep. making a profit over and above. So, because you want to make sure, but but again, that money part of that money is going to someone else. But if, if you could sell at, if, I mean, let's put it this way. If it's the difference between somebody saying, I'm not paying 1999 for that. And somebody saying, all right, I'll dig in and do the 15 for one, you're going to get a lot more 15s for one than you will 1999 for one. Do you follow me? Absolutely. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. And yeah, yeah. I took a lot more time to figure out the pricing on like the frame stuff, but yeah, I, I, I have to work on this one a little more. Yeah, yeah, the well, only I mean, most most of the time when I when I advise somebody and granted, I'm not I'm not, you know, an accountant or anything like that. But but I am I do, you know, consult on businesses that are startups. So if anything, the way I look at this is how long did it take you to create this and what is the material you're using and how much were those supplies that you invested in to make this item. And if that's the case, now granted, like you could have gotten, let's just say, for example, let's just say they give you, I don't know, let's just say it's acrylic. Okay. Let's say the, the base, I mean, the, the, the substance that it's printed on is acrylic. Okay. Let's say that you can buy 10 discs that are acrylic for, you know, whatever, I guess I'm, I'm, you said, I think the cost was five something. So let's just say you can get 10 of those discs for maybe, I don't know, $7, okay, or something less than that, or $5. And then the cost of the paints. Now, granted, blue paint is really hard to match. And it's got to be a combination of other colors to create the blue. So and this is the detail that it gets into that you don't that most artists don't realize. Okay, so then you're also talking about the red in there and the white and so on and so forth. Well, if the if the acrylic that it's on, you know, if there's 10 per package and you're, you're buying them for, let's just say $5, you know, right there, that's amounts to one item out of the, the $5, you know, you break, you break everything down. You have to break it all down. How much are the paints? How much are the, you know, what type of paint is it, you know, and is it, let's just say if it gets hot or if it gets in a cold area, will that paint come off? Will it smear? You know, if somebody rubs against the tree, you know, just to hang another ornament, if that comes off on their clothes, you know, is it washable? You know what I mean? So it's like there's a lot of factors to take into consideration just on this one little item. And it sounds funny, but you've got to take all those things into consideration. Plus, 
that's why you have insurance for your business. Yeah. Great, great thoughts there, Darby. Cause it's the, the, the selling, the selling online world and then the selling in person world, it's two completely different worlds and there's so much to it and it, it can become overwhelming and confusing. So another thing about the pricing for selling online, you need to consider is the each person you're shipping to with the print on demand, you're going to be charged that location's sales tax. <clears throat> so that comes out of your profits as well, unless you do the super complicated process of registering with each state, et cetera, et cetera. So that the, the that has to be considered as well. So look into places with a higher sales tax and factor that into your price point as well. So you're not like if someone from California buys your item, you're not losing money on that sale because of their sales tax charges that you you're covering. They're also covering as well, but that's being remitted. It's, it's so complicated. It's just, annoying. it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, well, don't forget too, that you've got to cover your own state's tax too because you have to report that back to them well with printify it, it all goes through printify so technically i think they're selling to the customer so with printify i had to fill out a reseller tax certificate Good. because i'm buying it from printify and then Good. reselling it Good. but they haven't approved right. it yet it's been a couple months but yeah i was able to do it for a whole group of states because they're all in like a group together so mm -hmm. that's nice it's i'm just waiting for approval that's similar to selling at a flea market. When you're reselling, there's there's a dish. It's it's taxed differently. It's a resell. So that's that's very similar. And you're right. You're they are the actual marketplace. And this is what I think X was concerned about initially when I came and said I wanted to sell my earrings. X didn't want to be the marketplace. They didn't want to be able to have to say well, I do have sellers on here and I've got to keep track of them because they're not selling my product and they're not collecting my taxes. I mean, paying my taxes and they're not collecting my sales. So why should they have to account for it? Just like me, when I'm doing these events, I'm not selling everybody else's products and goods. They're selling their own. The only thing I'm doing is selling them space. Does that make sense? It's a world of difference. Yeah, yeah. And this is why we can talk about this for like days because it's so complicated. And I wanted to get into this now, because if you do want to sell some sort of holiday item, you need to start thinking about this now and you need to start figuring it out. And I would also recommend, you know, Rich, if there's this ornament is the one that you're like, okay, this is the one I'm going to really sell this year or want to push or whatever, or you come up with a new design or whatever it is, you know, picking one or two designs to do this with and then ordering those for yourself so you can have them and understand exactly what the customer is getting is super helpful to do. And then you can also take like your own pictures. So it fits your vibe and everything as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, that as soon as you said ordering for ordering them for yourself, I immediately thought, Oh, and then I can decorate my Christmas tree and I can make a video and then I can post this social media and drive all this traffic to my site. So yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. And yeah, making content and, you know, it'd be fun. And that gets people like invested in your products way more, especially when you have a social media following. So like content creators, this is perfect for you, you know, come up with a design that represents what you do. You don't have to do a ton of them. Like I said, one or two, I would say three max, if this is your first time doing something like this, order the products and do your videos and, and sell, sell it that way. Show it off. Give the people opportunity to buy something. Now, I just want to reset the space here because I'm streaming everywhere. We're all over the place. And I don't know where you're watching if you're hearing my voice. So if you want to join the conversation, jump on X, come to the space, come to my profile. If you're on Instagram, you can find the link directly in my stories. We'd love to hear have you come stop by. If you want to, if you're down listening here in the space or on X, come over to the space, come request to come up, add your thoughts. Do you have questions about this stuff? You know, Jeff had a really great question. He's like, I just wanted someone else to do this. Well, yeah, you can, but now you're not going to make any money. So what's the point? <laughs> so it's, it's a tough, a tough battle to figure it out. So if anyone else has any questions, come on up. 
request the mic and we'll we'll get into whatever part of this is confusing because there's so much to this and it's there's so many layers and so many things that can go wrong and confusion. So whatever part we kind of speed past that you have thoughts about want to ask a question, please do that. And if you don't want to come up and speak, that's okay too. You can drop the question down in the purple pill and we'll bring it to your tent bring it to our attention. Up here, I'm in there looking at all the comments. So I will see that. And so I hope we can get some more people to their concerns because I'm talking about the experience from what I've gone through. I started selling online in 2020. I think a lot of people kind of did that. And, but what we learn from all that can now share with people who are thinking about starting something, thinking about selling something, thinking about putting something out there. And then what Darby brings to the table is those people who want to sell something in person. So selling at a craft show, an art show, farmer's markets, like you said. And we said, don't do flea markets, which I think was fantastic advice because that's not going to be necessarily the crowd. It diminishes your return. Yeah. It diminishes your return. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't just a way out. A stage you're so rugging a little bit darby yeah i can't i might have to drop down but i can't see the stage at all so just fyi okay yeah if you need to drop down i'll bring you back up no problem if you're having technical issues i've actually been pleasantly surprised how few technical issues we've had today because it's just been a nightmare on x spaces recently <laughs> so i'm actually pleased with all that now I pinned to the top and I've also dropped, I think I did put it down on the purple pill. Maybe I didn't. Yep, I did. My favorite print on demand companies and partners that I've worked with. So if you're thinking about selling online, I've kind of made some recommendations throughout the space and see now I have the glitch too. So I can't see the speakers. Oh my goodness. If I close that, no. Okay. Oh, oh I see. I see the problem Darby was having. Now I have it. Anyway. This, this post, the print on demand for content creators, these are my favorite partners that I've worked with over the past four years now, selling online. So yeah, okay. I'm not doing my job because I can't. Yeah. It's like the, the, the what's posted in the Jumbotron is too far down. You can't yeah, yeah. Let me, I'll you remove fiddle it. and fiddle and fiddle yeah. and try to get it up. And it's real hard to just remove okay, it. I, just remove just, the last one. There you go. Yeah. Actually, I had problems with the first two as well, but but it's like it freezes you at one point and then all of a yeah. sudden allows you to do it. But anyway, sorry to interrupt the space. It was such a great space and I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, stop it. You're not interrupting. No, okay. Ex- you got ex- interrupted. <laughs> yeah. That is weird that you can't once if it's too big, you can't scroll back down. Yeah. Okay. That's so why anyway. I always say I, I never use the jumbo trunk because I just think it's useless. You might as well just put it in the purple pill. <laughs> yeah. So it's down there in the purple pill. My print in my article I wrote, I don't know, a month or so ago with the print on demand prevent providers that I recommend and use. And I put my pros and cons because none of these are the perfect solution. They all have their pluses and their minuses. And I kind of go into it and I am affiliated with these people because I do work with them, but I am totally honest in my reviews. You can totally, you can read the article and see, because some of these are good. Some of these are bad. So the good usually weighs out the bad and I kind of go into that and explain it. So if you're looking, want to look into some of these companies, that's who I've listed. And there's artwork is one to, that's really tough. So if you want to make prints and you want to make wall art, that's something that requires quite a bit of research because some of the quality can be not what you expect, especially if you're an artist. And I know Rich, you do, who do you work with for your prints? Uh, Sensaria. And I've ordered a couple of them and I, I did post some videos. I think they look great. And actually one of them did come with like a very small chip in the frame. And so I contacted their customers. Well, I contacted Printify customer service and they gave me a full refund on it. So that was great too. But other than that one little imperfection, they look really good. The colors aren't as vibrant 
as they are on the screen, but that has something more to do with the source of the color versus like the sRGB versus the CMYK of the print. And I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. But yeah, Sensaria does a great job, I think. Yeah, great. And that is a partner with Printify, which is cool to know because I I haven't explored the wall art side of things. And I'm always so wary with it because as you know, as a photographer and as anyone who does art work knows when you try and print it it's like the whole world collapses in front of you it's just like because it's not what you envision or what you see on the screen and but I also so with that if you're thinking about doing something like that definitely order the samples and see and one of the benefits that Rich did met, just mentioned of dealing with these print on demand print providers yes we're paying a premium for the product and we talked about pricing and how the margins might be lower if you're trying to have a competitive price point. I would just encourage to just have a higher price point and that's that. But the one of the benefits that you do get with the these pr print providers is if there is a misprint, if there is damage from shipping, they will replace that product for the customer. You only thing you have to be is like that middleman in between. So for example, I had a product arrive to a customer and it was actually the completely wrong product. Somehow at the distribution center, someone other, some other store's product ended up in my customer's shipping label and that went to the customer. So it was completely wrong. All I have to do is ask the customer, send me a picture of the item, you know, the full item in full view, if it's multiple items, everything, detail, photo, if it's damaged or something. Then I send that back to Printify or whoever I'm working with, all these print partners will do this. Reach out to that customer support, send those images, and they will replace that item, no questions asked. The customer doesn't have to do anything. They don't have to return anything. They don't, you know, these are all one of a kind, one-offs, what do we call it? Like made to order. They're all made to order. So getting them back is, there's no point. So the customer can do whatever they want with it, but they will send a replacement for you at no charge if it's damaged or the wrong item, you know. So if it's because of, you know, my doing as in the design wasn't put on the product correctly, like, or, or something that I did, you know, as far as designing the item, they probably wouldn't replace that because <laughs> that's my fault, but they would definitely if it's damaged. So that's one of the perks of using these companies. So what I'm getting from this is that you can sell other people's products. Am I, do I have that right? <laughs> what do you mean sell other people's yeah, products? You, you were saying you were getting it from other stores and other, other people selling, so. No, 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 it was a mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake. But can it be, can it be a mistake on purpose? Maybe. It's the, I mean, there's always disgruntled workers at these places. So let's I almost not. think it was. No, let's hope not. Yes. Yeah, so the particular, I would, I would tell, talk about the details of this product, but it would be actually rated R. <laughs> so that's why I. It's oh, oh, oh no, no, you have to tell. Yeah. Now <laughs> use metaphor, know. use oh, childlike no. metaphors for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, we've got Ani up on stage. Thank you so much for joining What's us up, today. Ani? Oh, lovely to see you. Ani. Hi, Ani. Hey, guys. What's up? Oh, my God. I mean to like come over to your spaces more often. And then I end up just sitting there and listening. So today I was like, you know what? I'm going to go up. So I like joined and immediately requested to speak because then I can't get away anymore. <laughs> But you guys do such a wonderful job. You, Kate, you and Darby, both of you. So uh, happy to be here supporting. We love you. Thank you. Appreciate that support. Too. And we're we're getting deep. This episode, we're getting deep into selling. I'm really trying to encourage people to come up with something that they can potentially sell to their followers and their audience this holiday season. Because now is the time to start thinking about that. And actually, a month ago was the time to start thinking about it. But now is the time to start doing something, acting on it, and putting the wheels in motion to get that going. And we're, we're talking a lot about physical products and how to deal with that. But I also love the idea of coming up with a digital product for your audience that they could potentially either gift or enjoy purchasing for themselves during that holiday time when we're just like interested in shopping. It's like a, it's a time when 
the psychology of shopping is just on overdrive. So it's a great opportunity to just put out like a new product for your audience or something that could potentially be giftable. So I, that's what today's space is about encouraging and giving people ideas, get those wheels turning. And we've already got Rich who came up with a holiday product well on the space <laughs> and put it on his website, which was just so cool to see. He pinned that down below in the pill. All right. So I lost my train of thought there for a second, but I wanted to talk about the potential for digital products as gifts. So we'll get into that in a second. Ani, please go ahead. Just interrupt me. Oh, no, I don't want to interrupt, but I had an idea to kind of add to this. A lot of AI people like generate art, right? Um, what you can do like for holidays specifically, photo frames are like absolutely incredible gifts. There are a lot of digital photo frames. You can create art and basically, you know, like every digital frame could have their own set of art that rotates around and you could probably like sell that and people who like it would probably be interested in buying it as well. So there's an idea if you guys are interested. That's an amazing idea. Also, people can use that. I mean, this is this is something that I've thought about. I've even recommended to a couple of my vendors at my at my shows. They can get those electronic or digital art frames and use that for pricing, use that for, I mean, there's other ways they can use it too. They can use it as their flip, you know, their flip, like what, how we used to do things is we used to have a, a book that you put all the pictures in of people buying and different products that you used to have that you used to create. And it was called a flip book. Okay. And you don't need that anymore. If you have an electronic or a digital frame you could isolate certain things to that frame only like pricing like your qr code like a lot of different things the only thing i don't know is will a qr code still scan with the cell phone that's the only thing i don't know it does because normally when let's say a creator puts something on their youtube video and it's a qr code you can scan through your phone so that will work and another thing too like i the idea just came to me. If you create art, you can even create customized art for your clients. So like it could be a photo of them that you recreate with, it could be AI, it could be Procreate or whatever, right? But it's a digital form of art and it could go in their digital frame or it could be a print that you create and then you sell that. So there's, you know, you can incorporate art into this a lot. Yeah, I love you- the idea of personalized. Sorry, Rich, because that's where you can hit the higher price points and for your items by just adding a little bit of personalization. And if you're fast with these tools, it's not necessarily that much more work for you to create something unique and special. And that could be a digital product that you could send via email, or it could be something that you create into something physical. Sorry, Rich, go ahead. No, it's okay. I just, when Ani first said the digital photo frames, I immediately thought like, oh, get the photo frames, take them out of the package, preload them with all my artwork and then sell them that way. But I guess you're talking about just selling the photo frames by themselves. (laughs) You could do it that way too, though, Rich. I mean, you could do it that way too. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. The preload. I mean, you could buy a bunch of these at, you know, Walmart or whatever and preload them with your images or an image. Or yeah. tell them, you know, say, look, you get 10 pictures with this frame, you know what I mean? And let them, let them create their own or whatever, you know what I mean? Do, do what you're doing with, you know, that service. What was the service you use? A print on demand. No, or not print the print. Device. Oh yeah. What was it? What was it called though? You, the one you make the items? Oh no, no, no. You don't want to. Yeah, that's yours. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do it, do it. You could do it though. You could say you get with this frame, you get X amount of digital photos that I will prepare for you and, you know, we'll load it up for you and it'll be ready to go. You know, you could do that and that you could do do that from your own website. Yeah. And then you can up charge if they want a specific style of art or a specific piece of art that they want to add to it. You can up charge based on personalization, based on customization and things like that. And then Uh, you can also say, you know what, since you are an like if somebody buys it for a future purchase, you can say, I could do a discounted price to create art for you that will keep that I can keep feeding to your, you know, digital frame. Oh my God. Yes. You could offer that to your subscribers, get a new image every month. 
Oh, that's such a great idea. The subscription model, like I, we all hate the subscription model, but boy, does it work. And it just, as a content creator, you know, having that knowledge that every month this is going to be a recurring income. I mean, that is such a cool idea. And then sending out the, the images or whatever it is. Oh, I love that idea. So cool. I love these. Like, I brainstorming. Do yeah. And it's almost like, a, it's almost like a little hard drive for somebody instead of putting stuff on a thumb drive and saying here you go you're, you're just doing it on a on a digital on a digital frame it's really cool yeah i mean you could use the cloud you could just have a google folder per client and you could just feed the you know the copies into those drives like it's so simple yep and then other opportunities for digital artists the wallpapers for phones and and computer i mean me personally i don't get it <laughs> i still have the space background from you know, 2008, but this is a thing people want. They will buy, you know, wallpapers. So for their the digital devices, so you can think about selling those and you can even do like little bundles for each device or whatever. So that's a cool idea. I pinned to the top here and it's also in the purple pill, just a quick link to my, my card template and course, which is it's how you can set up the online store, either selling through the Printify pop-up shop or through Gumroad. You can actually go to this link and you don't even have to watch the whole course. You can just skip to the e-commerce stuff. And I kind of just go walk through that step-by-step. Step. So you can kind of just get a general idea of how that could work. And you don't even need the website to do this because you can set this stuff up with either the Printify pop-up shop or with Gumroad, your products. And you can just sell on your X account or Instagram or whatever with your links to the items so that you don't have to necessarily watch the whole course. You can just skip to that e-commerce part to kind of like maybe make that connection. And then if you do want to have your own website, you can easily follow the rest of the steps in that in that course to put it all together. All together, it comes out to an hour that it took me to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, it will take you a little bit longer to do it yourself but all the steps are there. So I thought I'd throw that up there if anyone wants to explore that, what we've been talking about today. Just been a really great discussion and I hope everyone's gotten a lot of value out of this. So we're gonna go for another 15 minutes or so. Um, and I wanted to really just encourage everybody again, whatever you have for your content creation, whatever your artwork is, whatever you're making, really try and think of something that you can, I don't want to say the word selling. I want to give your followers an opportunity to buy from you during the holiday season. So think of it that way. Don't think that you are selling, you're shilling, you're grifting. These words that everyone hates to hear and makes the idea of being profitable entrepreneur somehow toxic, which <laughs> I don't agree with. <laughs> but flip it in your mind. You have followers that really want to support you. They want to help you. They want to do what they can to encourage you to continue to creating content for them. So they want to have an opportunity to buy something from you. So don't feel like it's somehow bad to do that. And you can do that right through your X account. I want to make it easy for you. So feel free to ask me any questions leave your comments down on the purple pill if you don't want to come up and ask, or if you want to reach out to me, you can, and I can help you out. But we'll be talking about this. We do as a space every week, Darby and I, and I talk about more of the online selling and Darby knows so much about selling in person. It's just so valuable to understand these two dynamics of it. And we want to encourage you as the holiday season gets closer, we keep coming up with ideas. We see where the struggles are. So like Rich's ornament he put up, we already came, we talked about it and there was already some issues. He's going to be able to address those now. So it's not like a big deal once November rolls around and people are starting to get interested in buying these things. So join us next week. Um, I'm going to create that space and I'll pin it down below for next week. So you can set a reminder while we're here. Darby, I want to just talk again a little bit about the different price points because we got into that at the very beginning of the space and we have so many new listeners. I'd love to talk about like the psychology of the different price points and like when you're selling in person, 
how that works, what you offer and, you know, what you're hoping the customer will do when they're purchasing from you when it comes to pricing. I'm sorry. I can't see the stage again. I'm trying. I've been fooling with the darn stage. Okay. Can you repeat what you just said? I'm sorry. I'm just not, I'm trying to get, I can't see the stage. (laughs) Kate, go ahead and repeat to me what you just said. I apologize. Don't worry. I'm sorry, Darby. Don't worry about it. Uh, It's just you and me here. No one else is here. No one to see. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, (laughs) No, everyone, everyone's, I wanted to know, because we talked about very early on the pricing and the psychology of pricing. And so I just, the way you talk about it when selling in person, I think Mm -hmm. just translates so well to the psychology of just how people purchase items. So if you you mean the psychology of, of like, like there's a huge psychology around anytime you go into a store, when you go into a store and you go in grocery shopping, you know, there's going to be a variety of prices all over the place and they're going to offer you a variety of items to, you know, to select from when you go into a gift shop, again, you're going to have a moderate amount of uh, items and a variety to shop from as well as different pricing points. When you go into a festival, same thing. You're going to have so many different places. You're going to have gifts. You're going to have rides. You're going to have food. You're going to have all these different things. But when you go to like a craft store or a, or a gallery or an artisan show, it's, it's a lot more isolated to that, that the art. It's a lot more isolated, specialized to specialty items. So the pricing, you know, people know that when they're going to go to a show that is about creation, about something handmade, something that's, you know, artistically made, they know if it's going to be pottery or jewelry or artwork or wood, wooden, wooden goods, or even home decor, you know, textiles, whatever that is handmade, it's, it, it's going to be made a little pricier, but it's going to be better quality. You're not going to find these things in a regular old grocery store. You're not going to find them in a gift store necessarily. You may, but they're not going to be, the appeal is not as great. It's not as special as it is with the actual maker standing by their craft and saying, this item is mine. I created it, made it out of love. And this is the backstory on that. Um, because there's always a backstory on how they came to create their 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 passion for what they do. So the pricing is so crucial because people walking in there already are thinking, I'm going to be spending more than I should. You know, it just depends. And when they realize that the prices are affordable and they're reasonable and that the quality of the brand is going to last a lot longer than it would if they found something in a regular old store, you know, on a shelf at a grocery store in the, in the special aisle, you know, I mean, it's, it's different. So your pricing has to be comparable to what your consumers are going to know they can afford. It has to be diverse. It has to be affordable and you have to give various price points. You have to be able to say, I have earrings of all different shapes, sizes, styles, as well as different quality of materials. And yet there's a consistency that your brand is offering them awesome quality. So you want to be able to have a range of prices that is affordable for everybody that comes by. Now, granted, some people aren't going to be buying earrings because they don't wear them. You know, there, there's men that don't buy earrings necessarily, unless it's for a gift for their, for a female or someone they love. You know, um, so that'll make up for some of the people that don't wear earrings necessarily. But at the same time, pricing is so important. You know, you want to take into consideration the quality that you're using, that you're making, you know, the length of time it takes to make that brand. I mean, that that product, you want to make sure that it's where are you getting your your supplies? Are you getting them from where everybody else gets them? Or are you getting them uniquely from someone that distributes to you? I mean, like me in particular, most of my supplies that I've gotten over the past couple of years have been from the UK, from England. So nobody in America is buying from the same person I'm buying from, which is great, which I love. 
you know, so my price points, I may be paying customs, you know, when they come over, but I'm also buying in bulk, you know, and it's, it costs more to buy in bulk sometimes, depending on how much you're buying, you know, and when I spend $10,000 in inventory, just of supplies alone, I've got to make that back. So, you know, in one year I spent over $10,000 in just supplies. So yeah. And, and I've got it. And yet when I'm spending, you know, and my cost per earring ranges, you know, only in double digits, you know, it's not, (laughs) you got to make all that back up. Right. So I want to talk about more about, you know, like I absolutely, we need to be really assessing the value of what it costs to make that one individual item by ensuring that whatever it is we're paying for the materials, like Darby's really breaking this down. It's so good. But we also want to make sure if we have a couple different items that we have them at different price points. So like maybe I suggest having three items at maximum, especially if you're just starting this season and you want to just try and sell something. So one to three items and having those at the different price points. So we're working out like how much it costs for us to make the item or how much it's worth. If it's a digital item, maybe it's a little bit harder to figure that out, but you want to make sure you're understanding your pricing and then offering things at different price point levels. That psychology of something more affordable something higher end and then something that rides in that middle will always be such a fantastic tactic to use. Right, Darby? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You want to have, I mean, first you want to nail your product. You got to, you got to, you got to be able to provide the best quality product you can, because if you're only providing three items in your product line, then they better be really good. And if you're going to do pricing on those, they better be different prices so that somebody walking by, you know, if you're eliminating people that don't wear earrings, for instance, then you're down to what, you know, if it's, if it's 20%, you know, if it's males that aren't wearing earrings, cause some guys do wear earrings and they buy from me, which is cool, you know, and then there's others that, you know, are just buying for their loved one or whatever. But, but, and there's, then there's older people that don't really wear earrings sometimes anymore, you know, and then there's younger kids, younger people that maybe don't have their ears pierced, you know, so there's a lot involved in your market that you're targeting that maybe don't qualify for you selling to them. But yeah, absolutely. And, and I want people here understanding, I know not everyone here sells earrings and Darby knows that too. But the way she's talking about specifically about what her she knows, you take that and apply it to what you're doing, what you could possibly sell. Like, you know, we talked about all different yes. options for that, how that could look if it's a digital product, if it's print on demand, if it's something you're actually physically making and shipping out yourself. There's so many different versions of this and incorporating what Darby's talking about into whatever it is that makes sense for you. So I just want to make sure that's clear for everybody because you can pop in here and be like, what's she talking about? Earrings. You have to take it and spin it into how it makes sense for what you offer. It's your craft, whatever craft you're making, whatever style, skill you're doing that is specific to what you're creating as a brand. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm referring to. And I'm allowing you to use my earrings as, as my brand, as comparable to you, to what you're doing. So, you know, those, but my pricing is so different. I mean, everybody's pricing is going to be different. What size is it? How long did it take you to make it? What materials did you use? You know, did you pay extra in, in shipping costs for that? You know, I mean, but you're not going to take a shipping cost for one item, like which, you know, if I got 10 items of the same thing and the shipping cost was $5, you know, you're not going to charge somebody $5 for one item necessarily. It just depends on how you're going to, you, you've got to be practical and you've got to be realistic and you don't want to gouge people because once you, once they think you're gouging them, they'll never come back, you know? And the thing is, no matter what you say to them, they'll never come back, but they're not going to buy from you number one, unless they really like you and they like your backstory and they can relate to you or they feel like they're, they're 
getting something out of quality from what you're, you're offering. Right. And that's how the tying in the social media following and your audience, it's so important that if you are, you have people who are actively engaged in your content and really love what you do and appreciate what you do, giving them an opportunity to buy from you, everyone's going to be spending money at the holiday season this year. We're all going to be buying gifts. We're all going to be maybe shopping for ourselves a little bit. I like to do that. You know, so why wouldn't you give someone the opportunity to spend that money with you that is already your follower, already your supporter, just giving them something that they can purchase if they want to. Um, And instead of spending it at Walmart, instead of spending it at Amazon, you know, you don't have to think about it. It's like, oh, they're going to be spending more with me. They're going to be spending money with you instead of these other people. And well, and the know. thought counts. The thought counts. So people recognize that when they get a gift and the thought was put into buying that gift for them, making it personal. Yeah. And I'm making a, I'm making a Christmas list now for my ex friends, you know, so look out. <laughs> Am I on the top of the list? Oh, great. I shouldn't have said that. Was my <laughs> mic, mic wasn't muted just now. Oops. <laughs> but yeah, you know, everyone wants to give and do nice things for people. And, you know, even like something like a course, like I talked about this at the beginning, you know, digital products. Why are these off the table as gift ideas? People give gift cards. I mean, is there anything more hollow and empty as a gift idea yeah, than a gift card? No, no. <laughs> No, not, not, not at all. So why not give someone a course or a, uh, an opportunity, something like that, or, you know, you have this really great ebook that you know, that someone might want to give to someone as a gift, you know, why, why isn't that a gift idea? I think that has way more meaning than, than a gift card. (laughs) Well, and also something that most people don't realize is this election years, are typically very good years for sellers, typically. Oh my goodness. Yeah, typically. And that sounds, I'm not trying to bring political into this, but I'm, but I am saying that at craft events and craft shows, typically political years or election years are very productive for the seller. That is so interesting. I wonder, I wonder what that is. And it might be just because of emotion, right? Because shopping is an emotional purchase, especially for women. You but got that right. Yep. <laughs> so that's a definite right there. Yep. So that's interesting. So you don't necessarily, we're not saying you have to sell political merchandise or anything with a political tie to it. It's just this underlying. Well, I know somebody that sells political. Yeah, he, he does. He creates his own brand. And it's basically, you know, it's very patriotic and yet it's also everything he does is his own, his own design. It's his own design work and he has branded it, you know, from everything from hats to you name it. And he does all his own work. And I'm telling you what, he makes a killing, you know, because you got to remember too, you know, people buy flag stuff. They just do. It just depends on where they're from. You know, they might buy their home flag. I mean, Maryland alone, you see, you see the Maryland flag on stuff all over the place. I mean, you know, it's just, that's how they do it. That's what they do. People are proud about where they live. So they're going to be buying things that are representative or indicative of their homeland. Yeah, absolutely. And we got into this, we got talking about this. It's just such a great conversation and it's two o'clock. So I want to wrap the space up. Um, if anyone here on stage with me besides Darby, who has something they want to add, throw your hand up and I'll go to you. Otherwise we're going to just wrap up the space. I'm going to just summarize what we talked about, because I think there was a lot here that you could potentially want to listen to and go back and listen to the recording. Um, we talked about print on demand, We talked about selling on social media, talked about selling in person. So opportunities for that, selling digital products, selling physical products, making your own thing. There's lots of stuff that we talked about today. So if give it a listen, if you missed any of the early, we got right into it. Like we, we didn't waste time at the beginning of the space. We got right into it. We've been talking 
for two hours. And it's just amazing. So bring your questions next week pinned at the top in the Jumbotron and also down below in the purple pill, you'll find the space for next week. Set a reminder now. So you get those. Make sure you're following me, Darby, and everyone on stage right now. We all are always active in spaces and in the community on X. So you can get, get incredibly valuable content from everyone up on stage right now. So I encourage you to follow Darby, you have a space tomorrow. Do you want to talk about that and anything else you have going on, please? Sure. We hold Pivotal Discussion, which Kate is a big part of, um, and Pivotal Discussion runs as a broadcast on X, and it's on Wednesdays and Fridays, Eastern Standard Time, 8.15 in the morning. And then the topic tomorrow has yet to be determined. However, you know, we invite everybody to come join us because we do talk about serious topics, but yet at the same time, we always have a good laugh and we always try to help better our world, you know, and make everyone feel good about starting their weekend, you know, or feeling better about themselves and feeling a better, better about their week that they just had. So it's all about betterment and becoming a better person in general among our neighbors. So that's, that's where I am. And I also help out Loanne Cecil, who does Beautiful Souls on Sunday, and that is 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And she really is committed to providing everyone, because we do, we do a global thing. You know, the people that I'm associated with, Kate, Loanne, Polly, and Ginny as well. And, you know, we are all dedicated in trying to bring us globally together. So that's important to us. And, you know, we would love to have you participate. Yeah. Thank you, Darby. Yeah, those are always great conversations. I'm always learning from other people in those spaces and it's just fun. Those are just such great conversations. So thanks so much everyone for coming. It's wonderful to see you all, all the fantastic people in the listener section. Thank you so much for joining us. All the things I talked about, I have pinned down in the purple pill. I also have them on my profile. Reach out to me if anything here didn't make sense. It's a lot to take in. I really want to encourage everyone here to come up with something that they can offer to their audience this holiday season. Get some of that money that just flies around during this, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday, all those times when people are just spending money. Why not spend it with you? How about that? Let's get in that mindset. Yes. Take advantage <laughs> yes. of the PSYOP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They're going to be spending the money. Don't give it to Jeff Bezos. Don't give it to Crafts. Let them give it to you. All right. And maybe we'll have X payments by then. Who knows? That'd be exciting. All right. Thanks and so happy much, Labor everybody. Day, too. Happy Labor Day. Yes. Yes. Enjoy the long weekend if you get one. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. See you next week. Yes. Thank you.